What up my goblins and welcome to the guild. In today's video, we're gonna be painting a zombie beholder. Now, the reason I chose this model is because my local game store does a bi-monthly painting contest and this was the model they selected for this month. So, this is gonna be my entry into their contest. Let's hope it turns out good. But before we jump into this painting, be sure to complete your daily quests by subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button, and ringing that bell for guild notifications. And you invest a lot of time into your models and into your hobby, make sure that you're taking time to invest in yourself. When you sign up for Weebull with the link down below, you can get two free stocks valued up to $1,800 for just a $100 deposit. Who doesn't like some free money? So go ahead and sign up for Weebull, and now let's jump into this video. The first color we're going to start with is Umbral Umber from Privateer Press's P3 range. This is going to be used on the entire model minus the eyes and the mouth section. And this is going to be us a great base coat to start with to give it a good brown shadowy undertone for our future colors. Lauren Forest from Games Workshop is the next color we're going to use. And we're going to use a dry brush and start getting this on top of the brown, hitting all those high points and it's gonna be more of a rotting flesh tone, not so much of like a lost blood, like grayish skin tone that you would see in kind of like humanoid zombies. We're definitely going for a more rotting look on this model. The next color is from P3 and it's beaten purple. And we're gonna cover the entirety of his mouth with this color. So just go ahead, get everything in there we need. And then we're gonna start adding some purple to his skin on top of the green that we just put down. So it can be whatever color you want it to be, but my beholder before turning into a zombie, he was purple. So we're using the purple. Feel free to use a blue or an orange or a different green. Just be creative with it, enjoy. Sticking with P3, now we're going to Murderous Magenta. And this is gonna be his goopy highlight color for lack of a better term. So this is going around his eyelid. It's gonna go on his tongue and his gums. It's gonna be all the soft squishy bits for <laughs> a good description, I guess. All right, now to start on the teeth and the bony spike things this dude has. Now, what we're gonna do for this is go for my go-to favorite color for these kind of things. And that's Army Painter's Banshee Brown. It's just gonna give us a good layer to start with to get that bone and teeth color. Wazdaka Red from Games Workshop is the next color we're gonna be using. Now, where his cheeks kinda of are and where his jaw muscles would be from his mouth opening on the zombie beholder, there's a lot of deep gouges in here. The same goes for his lips. There's a couple of gouges going from like his lower lip down and his upper lip up. And we're gonna fill that with this Wazdaka Red to give it kind of an open wound looking thing. Where like if you cut yourself, you can see the redness under your skin and stuff like that. And that's what this is gonna be used for. The next color to be added to our palette isn't actually a color, it's a tone. It is Army Painter Soft Tone. And this is gonna be used to go over those teeth and those head spikes he has. And that's just gonna kinda dirty him up a little bit and give it more of a grungy, realistic feel than just this starch, banshee brown, light brown looking bone color. All right, it's time to highlight those teeth and bones and give them that nice dentist clean feel. Not really, but a few of those high points do need a little shimmer to them. So we're gonna get some skeleton bone. It's a little brighter than the Banshee Brown, especially now that it's been toned down with a soft tone. So going over those teeth and those spikes at those high points, especially those big mountain peaks where the two sides meet, it's gonna give the teeth and the spikes a little more realistic feel. Army Painter Ash Gray is the next color we're gonna be using. And what we're gonna end up doing this for is using it for the eyes. Now, you might be thinking, hey, they're eyeballs. Shouldn't they be like a bright white? Well, no, not actually. A light gray is kind of the better way to go, especially with miniature painting, because you need something to highlight with later on. And you can't really highlight white with white. I mean, if you get an off-white, you can, but that's not really the point we're trying to make right now is the light grays are white enough and it'll make your other colors stand out. And when you add that little white light source later on, it's really gonna show. Don't make a stink, we're using some yellow ink. 
and we're gonna put this on the eyes that we just painted that ash gray. And what this is gonna do is give everything another kind of dead, gross, rotting feel. It's gonna be very subtle, unless you're really looking for it, but the end effect of it's really gonna pay off. Just wait till you see this thing finished. So while we wait for that ink to dry, we're gonna use some uniform gray and get started on this base. So we're just gonna paint the whole thing in this uniform gray, at least the plastic part. We're not really gonna hit the, the black plastic base part. Huh, well, looking back on it, it's all kind of plastic, huh? Anyways, these rock things, they're gonna be gray. Next up is GW's Nurgling Green, and this is gonna be used to highlight that dead skin we painted way back when at the start of this video. So that green that we had down before, it's now gonna get its own little highlight with some Nurgling Green. And you see me wiping off my brush on my mat here, that's because we don't want a lot of paint on the brush. It's almost a dry brushing technique we're using without using an actual dry brush itself because I wanted a lot more manual control with this one. So get your paint on your brush, get most of it off of it, and then hit a lot of the high points. Maybe dry brushing would have been a quicker route, but I wanted more manual control than a big fluffy makeup dry brush. Now comes the part I've been waiting for this whole video to start this big old eyeball. Now it can be done with a multitude of colors depending on what color you want your eye to be. What matters is you have a dark and a light version of it. So for mine, I'm starting with coal black, which is a really dark greenish blue from Privateer Press. It's one of my favorite blues to work with. And so that's gonna be the base color of his eye. So. For mine, I want them kind of looking just upwards, so doing a nice half circle to get that color of his eye done. Pure red is the next color we're gonna be using from Army Painter. And we're gonna add just a very little droplet of water to it to thin it down just a tiny, tiny bit. We don't want this to be runny, but at least with my bottle, it was a bit thick, so I had to bring it down a notch. And we're gonna start adding some veins to the eyes. So just very thin lines here. And it just adds a little more impact to this monstrous eyeball we have. Arcane Blue from Privateer Press is the next color that we'll be using. And this is gonna be his eye color highlight color to really make his eye pop and stand out and make it look like he's looking at something. Again, pick just a lighter color of the base color that you used for his eye. Army Painter's Matte Black is going to be used for a very simple but yet very important step, and that's going to be his pupil. Going back to the base, Agrax Earthshade is going to be used to start getting the stones a more dirt and earthy feel, along with getting into those cracks and crevices and little caverns to make other parts of the stone pop more and make it not be so flat. The next paint is not a paint, but a coating. We're gonna get a clear coat, and this is gonna go over all of his eyeballs, all of his teeth, and on the inside of his mouth. That's really gonna help this stand out later, as it's gonna give it a shine. Just like how anything wet would have a shine to it, we're gonna try to get that similar look on our model. Filthy Cape is the next gray that we're gonna use from Army Painter. And this, we're gonna get on our dry brush and remove most of it from the brush itself. Just keep wiping till it barely starts showing up. And this is gonna hit the top of the stones to give it the stones a highlight and make them pop a lot more than they do now. Sterling Mud is the next texture paint we're gonna use from Games Workshop. And we're just gonna put this all over the ring of the base, covering up most of that black plastic base. And then we're gonna add a little bit into the deeper grooves of the stones, just to kind of integrate them a bit more. That way they're not just standing out so much. Now this next step is totally optional. I'm gonna grab some clippers and clip off one of his eye stalks so that he got like wounded in battle to kind of give him more of a little story. And then we're gonna take that and just glue that down onto the base. And finally, we're gonna get some blood for the blood god and then put that on where we cut off the eye stalk 
on both ends, both on the model and the eye stock down below, and then give them a little drip mark because blood's a liquid, it moves. So we're just gonna add a little bit of that to give it a little more fancy touch. And with that, the model is finished from gray plastic to finished masterpiece. I really like how this one turned out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, or if you have suggestions of what model I should do next, or critique my model. Let me know what I can improve upon. I always want to get better, and remember, keep on painting.